Hello and welcome. My name is Matt Richards and I'm an Apple Professional Learning Specialist based here in Adelaide, South Australia. And thank you for joining me for this workshop where we're going to unpack and have a look at Swift Playgrounds version number four. Now this is a particularly exciting version of Swift Playgrounds because for the first time since it came out in December last year, 2021, we we're able to use it to build and create our own functioning iOS apps. So for the first time, we can use the templates that are built within Swift Playgrounds or our own use of Swift code and have fully functioning apps. And so that leads us to the goal of this workshop. This workshop is going to look at unpacking a particular template where we can build out and create our own functioning app. And if we were to break this into some parts, we're going to have a look first of all at what the interface looks like in Swift Playgrounds 4 for building apps. We're going to modify and we're going to make some actionable code. Use some code that's going to give us some end results and start to find similarities and joins between the code itself and what we see on screen. We're going to get to manipulate and use some images and bring them in so we have our own photographs and imagery in our app. And finally, we want to expand the app by adding some extra content. So join me as we get started and we'll dive right in on our iPad and start creating our own app using Swift Playgrounds 4. Okay, so here we are at my iPad. We'll jump right on in and we'll start by opening up the Swift Playgrounds app, the white one here with the orange bird on it the symbol for Swift, the coding language. We'll click on that one and open it up. Okay, so in here I have two sections. Actually, before I get started, you'll notice that I've got a pointer moving around. A couple of things to note here. I've got a mouse, a Bluetooth mouse connected to my iPad. Very important to know that you can actually pair up any Bluetooth mouse to your iPad. I also have an external keyboard attached to my iPad as well. Both of these are going to give uh, the most amount of control I have to coding on here in particular. They're not essential, but they can just make life just that little bit easier. So we're in here and we're going to note that up the top half, these are all the tiles where all of my projects might sit as I continue to build them. Down below are all the playgrounds we can access and I'm going to click on this see all section over here. So here I am with a whole bunch of playgrounds that I can use for learning how to code in Swift and so on. But what's particularly important and valuable is this section here, the app gallery section. This is what's new in Swift Playgrounds 4. And we're gonna focus on this about me app here. So I'm gonna click get and let it download, which it should do pretty quick. Now mine's called about me copy because I have one previous. So I am gonna tap and hold on that one to reveal a menu and I'm going to rename it. And I might just call this about Matt and tap on done. Okay, there it is. Now that that's done, I'll click it to open it. And here we go. So just close this little walkthrough up the top here. I don't need that for this. And here we have what looks and can feel like a pretty scary sort of scene. There's a lot of code. I can see something visual on the right hand side. The, the code starting to scare me a little bit. Don't worry about that too much. So for the first part here, we're gonna spend a moment just to get to know what we're looking at. So I'm gonna start by clicking this little button up in the top left here. This is my sidebar button. Now what's really important to know here for you as well is that I'm using a 12 inch iPad. And because of that, I can see three vertical panels, my files, my code, my preview. If you're using a more standard 10 inch iPad, you'll only see two of these panels at any one time. So you'll have to close one to reveal another. And that's okay, that's just it using screen real estate and space so you can do what you need to do. For the benefit of me being able to show you, I can have all three panels open at the same time. Okay, so let's work around a little bit. What are we looking at? On the left hand side, I have all of my files that are used to create my app. At the very top here, I have a big button that says about me app settings. I'm gonna click on that and jump in here first. The name of my app is called about me. I'm gonna click on this one and I'm gonna change it to all about Matt Richards. And done. Now, underneath our name, we have an accent color. You can choose a color here that's gonna be used as the default color for anything that's in your app. So things like buttons, or you can access this through code as well. So I'm gonna choose this 
pinky ready color. Underneath, we have the image or icon for the app. Now at the moment it's ticked on custom, which means I can import anything that I want to make it my own. Now I might use an app like Keynote and create my own graphic for this, for the icon. For now though, I'm gonna use a placeholder, one that exists. And because it's a little bit about me, I thought I might just choose something fun like this smiley face here, this little emoji here. Now that I'm done, I can click the cross and close out of there, I've made some changes. Underneath, I have my files. Don't be too put off by them. All I want you to note is that quite a few of them end with the word view, and we'll come back to that later. We also have a second section here called assets, and this relates to any files that are used within the app. Again, I'll come back to that one later as well. In the middle, the scary bit, the bit that is Swift code. And as I said before, it might be a bit daunting to people, but we will unpack that as we go through it. And every file has its own amount of code. Okay. And on the right hand side, I have got my preview. So this preview, again, I can switch it on and off with this little button up in the top right hand corner to reveal and hide. And this preview is going to, uh, in real time, update and appear how it needs to. So, Keep your eye to the left of the words at preview. You'll see a spinning progress wheel. Every time we make a change in code, you may or may not, depending on how big the change is, you'll see a spinning wheel. And sometimes we do need to be a little bit patient. Underneath, I have a little scroller that can get me to other pages that I might be working on, but that's it there right now. The only other thing to call out too is back up in the top middle here, we have a play button. Now I'll come to this one later, but this play button basically says, hey, let's run the app properly. Beyond being a preview, I want you to run the app as though it's a real app. We'll get to that one again later as well. Okay, so let's make some changes. So So in this next part, I really want to focus about finding links between the files, the code, and what we see on screen in the preview. So to get started, I want to have a look at this heading that says all about. That one I'm just going to keep an eye out for. I'm noting down the bottom that I have four tabs, home, story, favorites, and fun facts. And when I look in my code, I'm seeing words like home, story, favorites, and fun facts that matches. And each of them have the word view on the end of it. And if I work backwards again, it seems to relate with this over here. Favorites view, fun facts view, home view, and story view. Okay, so I'm starting to see some connections. So let's have a think. I'm on my home screen right now. I might go to my home view. And sure enough, this home view is all the code that creates this page. Now I said before, let's look for the words all about. I can see the words all about here in red. Mm, it starts with the word text. Okay, it starts to make sense. I wonder if I change this code, I wonder if that relates to up here. So let's put in here, all about Matt. Sure enough, it's made the change instantly. So now I can start to see, I can create a, a bit of a link between what I see here and what I see over here. Now, my text says all about Matt. If I go underneath, I can see there's some little pieces of code here that tell how I want that heading to look. It's got a large title, it's got um, a font weight of bold, and it's got some padding to give it some space. Now underneath that chunk of code, I see another chunk of code starting with the word image, and that relates because I've got an image sitting here. And there's some facts about that one as well. And underneath that, I've got some text, and it's got the words my name. Interestingly though, my name, the words my name, don't appear here. I have some uh, more minimalistic uh, code, so we'll come to that in a second. All right, let's do our own bit of coding. After the word dot padding in our section here for the heading, I'm gonna enter down. The thing is, I wanna change the color of my heading. So I'm going to add the code dot foreground color. Now I've only typed the letters F-O-R-E and foreground color has appeared already as a modifier. So I'm going to click this return key. Sure enough, it's put the code in for me and it's thrown up an error. Simply the error is, hey, I don't know what color to use. So in here, I'm going to choose a color, dot green. Lock that one in. 
Sure enough, straight away it's changed to green and my error has gone. I might like to go a different color, say orange. And bingo, there it is as well. Again, the error has gone because I now have something in there in its place. Okay, so we've made a little bit of a change. The image I'm going to come back to shortly. We're gonna play with that one a little bit later. Underneath though, this text and for my name, well, this gets a little bit more interesting. You see, I want you to focus on this bit of code here that says information.name. The dot name is really, really key. And we know that it's a title. That's why it's a little bit bigger. So where is it getting the words my name from? Well, we know it's not going to be in story view because story view relates to the story tab. We know it's not in home view. Fun facts view relates to the fun facts tab. Favorites view relates to the favorites tab. We've only got data, content view, and about me app. I'm going to jump into data. Now to give you a shortcut, this is where it's at. I said to you before, we were looking at this piece of code that had dot name. Now I can see the word name. Name is here name is here and aha there is a piece of code a piece of text that says my name so somehow this piece of code is being drawn back to the home view into here and that's what's being displayed so all the data that's appearing in my app seems to be contained within this one file let's change this let's change my name to our own name give it a moment there is that spinning wheel. It's doing a bit of an update of the app and sure enough, there it is there. Okay, this makes sense. So in this data file, it's containing a whole bunch of information that's being used across the app. Let's go back to the home view. Nothing's changed here. It still looks the same because it's pulling that data from the data file through this page here. I wonder though, I'd like to change the color of my name. Now we know how to change a color and here is where all the modifiers are to change that color. So I'm gonna do it exactly as we did before. Foreground color, I typed in F-O-R-E, there it is. And I might give it a value of accent color. Look, there it comes up as an option and I'll enter that in. And sure enough, there's that pinky ready color I was talking about before, same as what's used on the buttons. Fantastic, we've made a change. As I said, we'll come back to this image a little later. Let's jump over to the story tab. Now, because I'm gonna click on the story tab here, I'm also gonna click on story view over here. Now, when I do flick between the two, the preview will wanna default back to the home page. No problem, we can switch it back. So here's my story view. My story view page is looking for some bits and pieces. It's got my heading, my story, again, if I change that, it's gonna change up here. There is some modifiers that modify that code. And here is a little section of code that's going to allow me to add some text in here. Now, just like our name, it starts with information.story this time. So it's pulling this piece of code from the word story. Let's go back to data and we can see, aha, here is story, here is story, and here is a whole chunk of text that was my story. Let's bring up that preview again. Sure, it matches. A story can be about anything you can dream up. There it is there. And it's really obvious because we've got all these, all these um, emojis sitting there as well. So I'm gonna change some of this text. In fact, I'm gonna get rid of almost all of it right down to here, just before this backslash N. Now backslash N means make a new line. That's why there's a few of them in here. And at this point here, I can see backslash n, backslash n, which is gonna give me two lines. You can see there are two lines here. So I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna say, Matt is an Apple professional. Learning specialist. Based in Adelaide. Of course, you would be typing your own thing, A-D-E-L-A-I-D-E, -E. you know how to spell my own hometown. So, Matt is an Apple professional learning specialist based in Adelaide. Let's jump over to story. I can see up the top, don't freak out too quickly if your um, content hasn't updated, always check up here first to see that it's not um, actually doing a little update there. And there it is there. Now my emojis, I don't really want those particular emojis, so I'm gonna get rid of them. Using my keyboard, open up my emoji icon, 
and I'm going to find one that has, I'm gonna use computer, and I might grab this guy here and pop him in. Let's have a look. There it is there, fantastic. Matt is an professional learning specialist based in LA. Might need to learn how to spell specialist. Put an I in there for those that have picked up on that already. There we go, okay. So, fantastic, I know how to put some content in there. Now I wanna add one little thing here, just little bits of information as we go. You will have noticed that the word name sat up here and name was here. Story was here, story is here. The best analogy I can give you for this is this is a structure. See the word struct. This is like saying these are shelves and this is the contents on that shelf. So I have a shelf called name. And here, what's on that shelf is the text that is my name. Here is a shelf called story, and here is the contents on that shelf. It's the best analogy I can give you. Let's jump over into another tab. Let's go to favorites. And I'm gonna to go to favorites view. Now favorites view allows us to learn something new. I want to introduce you this piece of code. You may have noticed it already in the other pages, but I'll mention it now. This thing here called a V stack. V stands for vertical. It is a vertical stack of code. And we can see that it does stack vertically. Here is my text, which is going to make up my heading. Here, you'll see some hobbies. And within it, I have a bunch of other pieces of code as well. I'm gonna come all the way down there. All of that code is all about hobbies. If I scroll down a bit further, I can see all of the code that relates to my foods and all of the code that relates to my favorite colors. So we can start to change all of these, but most importantly, you'll notice that they are stacked vertically, hence the V stack. So if I was to jump into hobbies, we, we know how we can change a heading if we really want to, we don't need to right now. Text, hobbies. We can change the way that hobbies looks. In fact, we can do that right now. Dot foreground color, something we've already done. I'll enter that one in and I might do dot accent color again. Back into favorites. Sure enough, there it is there. Now, because I've made that color change, I think, well, it would be good to be consistent across the other headings as well. This is text. So I can highlight that line of code. I'm gonna command C, copy it. And under my text for foods, I'm gonna simply paste it, command V. And under favorite colors, I'm gonna do exactly the same. Sure enough, there they are. All I've done is add that one line of code for each of those. Okay. So, let's have a little bit of a look at these hobby symbols here. You see, underneath the word hobbies, and here is my text for hobbies, here is something called an H stack. Now, if V stack stands for vertical stack and H stack makes sense, it's a horizontal stack. And that makes sense because have a look at how these icons are spread apart. They are horizontally stacked. So we need to go and find where this comes from. And aha, I noticed this code again, information.hobbies. Now I know that every time it starts with information, it's pointing me to this data file. So let's go and check it out. Into data. Here it is, let hobbies, there's my shelf. Down to hobbies, aha, bicycle, ticket, and book. Let's just bring it back up, bicycle, ticket, and book. So I'm thinking I wanna change what these are. Now to do it, I'm gonna introduce you to this plus button up here. And this plus button has a whole raft of things we can add to an app. I wanna point you to the third tab, the one with the star in a circle. This is our SF symbols. And there are literally dozens and dozens and dozens of symbols. Okay, now I'm going to put in, I'm gonna search for a symbol in particular. I like travel, so I'm going to pick a plane. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm not going to click it. I'm going to note the name of it. Also know that there is um, American spelling through this. So airplane. So I'm going to choose this one here, airplane. What I need to do is come back to my code and I'm going to remove the word bicycle and simply re replace it with airplane. I'm gonna let it update, back into favorites, and sure enough, there it is. 
I'm gonna jump up in here again into my symbols and I'm gonna find another one. I'm gonna pick car. And because I love traveling in my car, I'm gonna grab this one here, car.fill. I'm not clicking it, I'm just gonna note what it's called. Back over to here, I see ticket.fill. Well, I can leave the dot .fill or just replace it with car.fill and it's replaced it, fantastic. So now for my third one, I'll jump up into the plus button, into my SF symbols and knowing that I love music, I'll type in music, I get some music notes, I might pick this one here, music.note.list. So back I go over to here, I'm gonna remove all of this, oops, I'll undo that, little mistake. Music.note.list. Let it do a little bit of an update, jump back into favorites, still waiting for it to update, and there it is there. Fantastic, so just like that, by noting what those SF symbols are, I can write their names in here and it will apply them accordingly. Now, underneath into foods, I can see three emojis, pretty straightforward to see, here they are here. I'm going to simply highlight the emoji I don't want anymore, open up my emojis, and I might type in food as a search icon, and I'm gonna choose a healthy salad bowl. Maybe the taco, I'll get rid of that one. Again, I'm gonna jump into my emojis. Once again, I'll type in food and I might choose a healthy looking, let's go salad wrap, but we can't have salad all the time in our life. So one more time, we're gonna choose a nice slice of pizza. So I've put my three emojis in there and there we go. Two health foods and one discretionary food item. Now, finally, my colors underneath that. You can see here we started with foods, now we're starting with colors. Again, note the American spelling of colors. Color dot blue, color, notice the spelling. Now I'm gonna change these, I am gonna leave the blue because I'm going to pick on particular colors. I'm going to pick yellow and I'm going to pick not pink, I'm definitely going to pick red. And knowing that I am from South Australia, and if you follow the footy, that will make sense to you uh, what that team might be. I'll leave that with you. All right, now we've created our changed version of our favorites. The only one thing I will do here, I am gonna jump back into my favorites view, which is all about that page. And one of the things that I did show you right at the start was changing our headings, and I did talk to you about spelling. So I am going to just modify this one to make it a bit more accurate for us in Australia. So there we go. Uh, and once again, down here as well, favorite colors, lovely. So just a little change there, and we know that we can do that in that text. Finally, my fun facts page. Now again, I'm gonna choose my fun facts tab. I can jump over to here to my fun facts view. There is all the code about my fun facts. Now we don't need to spend too long in here because we kind of get the idea we can chop and change some colors if we need to. This one, however, has a button that says show random fact. And if I was to click it, it's going to show me a random fact. Where is it pulling that random fact from? Let's have a look over here. I see in the code button show random fact and I can see it says fun fact equals, and here it is here, information.funfacts. So we know that by it starting with information, it's pulling it from this data file. And hey presto, and you might've noticed this before, is that here is a whole bunch of fun facts. So I don't need to go through and change these, you can simply go through yourself if you choose, and just modify the text that's within and make your own fun facts about you. Okay. So now that we've had a bit of a play with our app, we've started to learn how we can change the content. We've learnt what a VStack is, and we've even learnt, if I was to jump into my favorites view, we've even learnt what an HStack is. You can see the VStack there, which stacks everything one on top of the other vertically. And within that VStack, we can even have an or a horizontal stack. Awesome. So what next? Let's move back to the home page and let's have a little bit of a play with this photo. So so I'm gonna just click on a couple of things here. I'm in my home view. I wanna go over to here to my home view file and I wanna re come back to this piece of code that says image information dot image. Now we know that information means it's coming from the data file. 
and up the top, here it is, image, there's the shelf. And image down here, what's on the shelf is something called placeholder. Now I did mention at the start, there is a section here called assets. And these assets are what are files that live within the app. And if I click on this placeholder, there it is there, that matches that. So what does it mean? It means that in my code, it is taking the word image from data and data is finding this file called placeholder. So the answer is, what if we change the name of placeholder to something else? So I need to introduce another photo. So I'm gonna jump up the top to this place, uh, plus button up here. I need to add a new asset, something that is a photo of me. I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna jump down into photo, into my albums and into my um, album that I have ready for this. Here is a profile pic that I use. I'll grab that one there. Now I'm not going to use the letters P, I, C or profile, uh, sorry, or pic. So we find that sometimes that just creates a few little problems. So I'm going to use um, a different one here, profile image. Notice I'm using camel case, the capital I in the middle of the name. So profile image is my file name for this. I'm gonna go back to my data view. Now remembering that on the shelf image, it's pulling in a file called placeholder. There it is. Well, if I wanna change that now to profile image, making sure that my cases are correct and just like that, it's updated and easily dropped in a picture. Fantastic. That was pretty straightforward to do. We added an asset and we now pointed image to that asset. Fantastic. So now that we've got to this point here, we understand that we can modify our um, template, our About Me template um, with some different content. And we can play around with this as much as we like by adding a variety of different content. However, what I wanna do now is I wanna shift gears a little bit. What I would like to do is add some extra content. And by that, I mean we have four tabs running across the bottom. I'd love to add a fifth one. So to do that, we're gonna to need to create a whole new set of rules around this and some new content. So let's get started with that. To do that, I'm going to start by adding a brand new file. I'm gonna click on here, up on the plus button and click Swift File. Now I need to know what is my new page going to be about? And I'm gonna be making mine about my garden. I don't mind tinkering in the garden, so I'm gonna call this one Garden. Now you'll notice just like all the other pages, they end in the word view. So I'm gonna follow that same convention and call mine garden view and I'll press return. So there is my file. And when I look in garden view, there is really no code. There is just this one line that says, hey, import some Swift UI code. So I need to start playing around with this and making uh, some new parts. And the first part I wanna add is the tab itself. So, if I jump up to my content view, you might remember this from the very start, and I talked about home view, story view, favorites view, and fun facts view, I now need to add a fifth one, and that's gonna be my garden view. So, I need to take, the easiest thing is take one of these and modify it. Now I'm going to take just, I don't know, this one here, story view, that will do just nicely. So I need to remember that I'm starting with the words story view, and I'm ending my highlighting here with the closing curly bracket. I'm gonna Command C, copy. I'm gonna come down to the end of the fun facts view and I'm gonna enter down just a little bit. And at this point, I'm going to paste Command V that code story view. Now this seems a little bit crazy because I now have two story views. So let's start making some obvious changes. This is no longer gonna be called story view. And by the way, have a look down the bottom, it's already added an extra tab, but of course we copied story view, it's just copied the tab over. So we no longer want this to be called story view, this is gonna be called garden view. And our label is not gonna be called story. I need a new label, it's going to be called garden. 
That will sit under there in a moment. And I'm going to need a new icon. I don't want the book anymore. Now, of course, there is an error. I'll come back to that in just a moment. So this book icon, we definitely don't want. So I'm gonna jump up into my plus button, into my symbols, and I'm gonna choose a leaf. It's called leaf fill dot fill. So in here, I will change book to leaf dot fill. Okay. Now, it doesn't like a few things. It's not updating because it notices that there's a bit of an issue. And the issue is it can't find this page or this information called garden view. So we're not gonna worry about that too much because we haven't created it yet. So how are we gonna create it? Well, I have my file, but there's no code in it. So I really do need to create uh, some more code that's gonna allow this to, to play and make sense. And where am I gonna get that from? Well, of all of the four tabs that I have, the story view is actually the easiest one to use. It had the least amount in it. So I'm gonna jump into story view and I'm gonna highlight, I already have this line import Swift UI. I'm gonna highlight everything from under Swift UI all the way to the bottom. I'm basically going to copy and lift this code, command C copy and into my garden view and I'm going to paste it in, okay. It still has some errors. Well, of course it does because it thinks it's story view. I'm gonna change the word story to garden. And down here I see story view again. Change that to garden. And underneath I see a third one. And just like that, my fifth tab has come back and everything looks happy because I finally put some code in that it recognizes. All those errors are gone. Now, Let's have a look and see what it says. So if I jump into garden view, it's pulling up the same code. Oh, of course it is because in my code for my text, it's looking at information, remember, data file, dot story. It's looking at that story shelf. Well, we don't really want the code from that story shelf. We need to make a whole new piece of code about the garden. So let's create that. Up into data, where all our, all our information is stored, we're going to need to make a new one. So I mentioned shelves and the content on the shelf. One thing to note also is that everything's in order. Image, name, story, hobbies. Image, name, story, hobbies. Everything is in order. So I'm going to add one at the bottom here. Let garden, colon, and it's gonna be a string. All right, now I'm going to need to make this down the bottom. Here we go, it's got a bit of an error. It's saying, hey, I don't know where garden is. Well, of course, because we haven't made it yet. So something very, very important to call out here, and I'm sorry for the complexity in this, but at the end of every one of these lines, you'll notice that there is a comma, 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 comma. At the, at the end of the last one, there is no comma. This closing square bracket, part of an array, this is an array, there is no comma because it's the last one. Well, it's no longer going to be the last one, so it needs a comma. And I'm going to write garden. And this is where I can start to put some of my information. Okay, so I might just write images of my garden. All right, let's have a little bit of a look. Notice up the top, so I'm worried that it's looking different, but of course it was updating and it's still updating. Okay, so nothing has changed yet. The reason being, if we jump back to our garden view code, we can see it's still looking for information dot story. It's still looking for that story shelf. So I'm gonna change the word story to garden. I did make a garden shelf. And we'll enter that one in. So now it's pulling up the information from data, garden. Let's have a look. And there it is there, fantastic. Images of my garden. Look, I might even go one step further and under garden view, I might say, hey, I want this to have another color. Foreground color. And I might make this one dot orange. Now something else I might do while I'm here 
is obviously the words my story don't work. I do need to change this one to my garden. I'm happy with that. But I do want the heading to look a little bit different. Now, as a, different to changing its color, I'm going to use a background. Type in back, there's my background modifier, I'll pop that in. And I'm going to, in the brackets, write dot green because I want it to have a green background. If I jump over, there it is there. I don't like the black on green, I perhaps like white on green, so I'm going to change that foreground color to white. And let's have a look. There we go, not too bad. Okay. So now that I've got my garden in there, I really want to have a stack of a couple of different photos of my garden. Now, we talked about stacking things before as part of a vertical stack. And here I am, I'm in my V stack. My V stack starts with my text, and then I have a scroll view of some information. Now, I might like to put my images in between the text and the scroll view. So being that it's vertical, I'm going to place it in here. I'm going to push everything down, and I'm going to start thinking about putting some photos in there. Now to do that, I'm clearly going to have to import some photos. So let's jump up into the plus button, into photo, and I'm going to grab this image here. I'm going to grab three images in total. I'll call this one pink flower. I'll grab another one. I'll call this one horseback, and finally, I will grab one, and we'll call this one bird box. Fantastic, got three images that I'd like to put in on my garden file. Okay, so in my garden view, I'm going to make my life a little bit easier. I'm not going to put these photos in the data page. I'm going to just bring them straight into the actual page itself. I'm going to start with a piece of code that says image, open up some brackets, open up some speech marks, and we'll type in bird box. And let's see what happens. Aha, we've got a little bit of a problem here. I can see the bird box has gone in, but it's way too big and it doesn't look right. So I need to add some code to this. Underneath, I'm going to start with dot resizable. Now resizable is a piece of code that's going to allow the bird box image or my image to change its size. It gives it permission to be, um, the, uh, to, to be able to be modified. But I don't, I'm not happy with the way it looks. Uh, so I'm gonna add another one, another piece of code that's going to say scaled to fit. So it's going to readjust it so that the image stays square because it was a square image. And finally, I do want to add a little bit of space around it. I'm going to add some padding. So dot p a d d i n g dot padding. And within that padding, I can give it a value. So if I keep my eye on it, my padding at the moment is set to a default value. But if I change it to say 10, it will modify it accordingly. If I change that padding to say 40, you'll notice it makes it a lot smaller and so on. Okay, let's grab a second image. So same process, it is a vertical stack after all. Image, open some brackets, open some speech marks, and we'll put in horse back. And let's check it out. Again, it doesn't look very good because it's oversized. Now, I've already written three lines of code to help it fit. It would just make sense to copy those three lines of code and paste them underneath. Let's have a look. Bingo. They are a little bit spaced out, so my padding might be a bit of a problem here, but let's put in the third one. Image, open some brackets, and we'll call it pink flower. Again, I'm gonna need these three lines of code to make it fit properly. And let's check it out. Sure, there it is there, but the padding is definitely a problem. So let's reduce this maybe to say something like 20. 20 and 20. Still a little bit small, so I might even go one step further. 10, 10 
and 10. Fantastic. So now I've been able to put in images straight into my app. So there we have it. We have a functioning app that shows five different pages. Okay, well now that our app is completely finished, one thing that'd be really good to do is look and see how it behaves and looks when it runs as a true iOS app. So, if we have a look at our screen, I did call this button out right at the start, this play button right at the top here. If I click that play button, it is gonna build my app as it would work on iOS. There are my buttons running across the bottom with my content, and of course, finally, that last one with my images as well. So it's looking pretty good, I'm happy about that. And if we bring our mouse or cells back up the top, we get the option to stop, and we come back to Swift Playgrounds. So there we have it, a completed app using the About Me template. So thank you for joining me for this workshop and I really hope you got something new out of it. Swift Playground Sport is particularly exciting. And for those learners who really want to take this further, I might engage you in the Apple Teacher website, appleteacher.apple.com. And whether you're a student or an educator, it might be a worthwhile place to have a look and find some extra resources that can help guide you on your way further through this coding journey. But once again, thank you for joining me for this workshop. I hope you learned something new. It's been a pleasure to show you. See you later.